Hey everybody, good Tuesday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. Of course, it's weather for weather geeks. We're less than 48 hours away now from my annual winter forecast. If you've been watching weather for weather geeks of late, you know all about this. So we're going to debut it on Thursday evening. If you've been following my winter forecasts and weather for weather geeks for many years, you know kind of know how this works. We're going to do a long, geeky weather geek centered version if you will um, Thursday evening between the 6 and 11 o'clock newscasts in years past sometimes that video is 15 or 20 minutes we get into a lot of detail uh, it's it's for the nerds out there it's for the, those who want to know why the forecast is what it is and for those maybe who just really want a lot of weather information in addition to just the basics of the uh, forecast we're gonna do that basic TV version of course on 21 News at 6 and 11 Thursday evening. But the geeky version, you can watch it right here where you're watching Weather for Weather Geeks Thursday evening. But on this Tuesday, the story today was pretty nice election day across the valley. Temperatures were a little bit variable. We had a gradient across the area. It was warmer south, cooler north. At the airport, we snuck up to 61 before the clouds rolled in. It was a little bit of a forecast bust on our part today. We expected the airport to stop in the mid-50s, but a little bit of bonus sunshine this afternoon went a long way got into the lower 60s this afternoon, but then temperatures really crashed pretty hard once the clouds streamed in from the north, ended up closer to 50, not long after sunset at the airport this evening. Now we've had five straight warmer than average days after a pretty chilly start to the month on the first and second. Mentioned that temperature gradient today. It was even warmer, of course, off to our south. Uh, it was well up into the 60s down towards East Liverpool. At some of our official reporting stations, Pittsburgh was 13 above average, New Philly 10, Wheeling 13 above average. That's 61 at the airport in Trumbull County, eight degrees above the average. And you know, when you look at the nation as a whole, this is a map that is much more typical of, say the first half of October, rather than the first half of November. There's basically no winter on the map uh, this evening. 80s in Dallas today, uh, 70 still at this early evening hour in Atlanta, even in almost two hours after sunset. Uh, Phoenix, you would expect it to be warm out there, but hey, 88 still pretty warm for early November out in Phoenix. And of course, with that, a lack of wintry weather across the lower 48 states. We do have air cold enough to support a little snow up towards Winnipeg, out across parts of Manitoba, Alberta as well. A um, little bit of snowflake activity in parts of uh, Quebec. That's about it. Across the lower 48, of course, things are pretty quiet. So let's zoom ahead to the longer range trends here. There's not much in the way of really interesting weather, to be honest, in the next several days. As we go into the longer range, though, the pattern will become a little more interesting across North America. This is a Mondo trough that will be digging into the west in about a week or so. Uh, this is going to produce early season rain events for LA, for San Francisco, maybe Vegas and Phoenix, places like that. Um, usually when the weather is really unsettled and chilly out there, downstream, you got a ridge popping. And I would expect that to kind of start to transpire later next week. We're going to start warming things up in the east while the west is unsettled. The subtropical jet stream, a hallmark of El Nino, will become more and more of a factor with time. And my gut feeling is this pattern that starts to emerge for a time in the longer range, we're talking eight, nine, 10 days from now, may bear some similarities to what ultimately kind of dominates for a lot of December. We'll talk about that, of course, in more detail in the winter forecast coming up in a couple of days. In the meantime, though, of course, no wintry weather coming around here. When we look at the country as a whole over the next seven days, here's a look at one model depiction of snowfall, hardly anything east of the Rockies, maybe a little bit up towards northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan. Um, but otherwise, it's the West Coast. It's the Sierras, the Cascades, Colorado Rockies, places like that. Now, in New England, uh, getting grazed a little bit up in the higher terrain, green and white mountains, Berkshires, places like that. But otherwise, it is pretty ho-hum. And you see that more active pattern reflected on today's Climate Prediction Center 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook. Look at the greens here in California. That means very high odds of wetter than average conditions in L.A., San Francisco, maybe Vegas and Phoenix as well. So yeah, no surprise to see that kind of a map. Back here in the short term, warm front heads our way on Wednesday. I think this is gonna be another day in which we have kind of a decent temperature gradient across the region. Now, Athens and Parkersburg, Marietta, Charleston, um, even Cincinnati, be way up into the 70s tomorrow afternoon. Not around here, but even in our viewing area, there's gonna be another one of these gradients where East Liverpool is probably gonna get up into the 60s. Um, Kinsman, Mesopotamia, Greenville, and especially up towards Lake Erie, you're going to be hard-pressed to get out of the lower 50s for a time Wednesday afternoon as this warm front lifts off to the north, and this same warm front might produce 
a shower here and there before the afternoon's through. But there's a better chance of showers with the approach of our cold front later tomorrow night, first thing Thursday morning. And this is going to be one of those days Thursday that's a little bit backwards. We're going to start the day probably in the upper 50s to around 60 in some spots. We're going to spend a lot of the afternoon closer to 50, uh, even though the sun's going to try to come out as we go into the afternoon on our Thursday. And this uh, front ends up being kind of a stationary-ish boundary um, later Thursday night into Friday. Could have even drawn a warm front on this map because it does start moving. It's not truly st stationary at that point. But nonetheless, this whatever it is, this wave of low pressure, this front probably produces a, a round of rain to our south Thursday night, Friday morning. I don't think rain's likely around here, but we'll see some clouds for a time, followed by some clearing by Friday afternoon, and that'll set the stage for quiet weekend weather, and high pressure is going to drop an anchor from this weekend into early next week, giving us quiet weather. And here's today's 6 to 10 day, 8 to 14 day, and weeks 3 and 4 outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center. I already showed you that 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook, but already in the 6 to 10 day period, you see that pattern emerging in the west. We're pretty dry initially in that 6 to 10 day period, and then we start to get wetter as we get warmer with time. Weeks 3 and 4, so we're talking getting pretty close to Thanksgiving time. Uh, while the pattern might start to become a little more back and forth, not as consistently warm, in other words, in our area, <clears throat> you don't see a lot of blue on this map. Uh, it's not a chilly looking pattern. Maybe a little less wet as well for us as we go towards Thanksgiving, but I think the week before Thanksgiving, again, 9, 10 days from now, pretty mild and probably some chances for precipitation <clears throat> as well. All right, winter forecast coming up Thursday evening. And, you know, on Weather for Weather Geeks, I've been kind of teasing what we're going to be talking about and showing you some graphics occasionally. One of the key players, of course, this year is El Nino. We've been in La Nina for three straight winters. Now we're in El Nino in the Pacific Ocean. This El Nino, though, is a little bit weird. Um, it may not behave uh, as you would expect in a pretty strong El Nino. You can see the trend here with El Nino getting pretty close to that strong category as we speak. But there's other stuff going on in the oceans that's a little bit of a hangover, if you will, from three straight years of La Nina, which is going to make this El Nino, I think, behave a little bit differently than a typical strong El Nino. And that may make for colder and snowier times for us as we go into the back half of winter. It's going to be one of the key tenets, I think, of our forecast is maybe a slow start to the winter and maybe a much bigger change after the first of the year. We're going to talk all about that and everything that goes into the forecast. <laughs> Believe me, it's going to be very detailed. Don't forget, we're going to do a blog version as well. If the videos aren't enough for you, read the blog, ericwfmj.com. Uh, that blog post will also be posted Thursday evening. It'll have even more detail than the video because if I went into all the detail in the video that I do in the blog, the video would be 45 minutes long. We're not going to make the video that long, but the video itself, of course, will be highly detailed, hopefully highly entertaining, and hopefully a better forecast than we had last year. Tune in Thursday evening. I'll see you back here on Wednesday for the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast.